Man, I think we are good to go. Caleb Dressel, welcome to the podcast, mate. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Um, this is this is kind of a pinch myself moment for me, man, because like um, I, I got to tell you, I'm a I'm a huge fan of yours uh, in many respects. One because of your reputation of the type of person you are. There's so many people that just say that you're a good person. I mean, just in general, a lot of people, you know, you always meet somebody that say, well, that person's a nice guy. That person's either this or that, but everybody says you're a nice guy. Number one, number two, you're the, you're the best swimmer in the world. Currently. I mean, you, you it used to be Michael Phelps where everyone would talk about him. And now they talk about Caleb Dressel in the same way. So so the fact that you're a good person and you're the best swimmer in the world for me is it's just a huge honor to be able to talk to you, man. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's kind of it's very strange how things have come full circle. I don't consider myself to be that that person. I'm just still enjoying the sport and trying to go best times, which is what every age grouper ever says. So, still having fun with it. Still, still have some some big goals out there. So I still want to get some things done in this sport. But I appreciate it. But I I don't consider myself to be the guy. I don't want to be the guy. I just want to keep swimming and try to go fast. Well, I, I respect that. But you're the guy to a lot of people, man. And uh, and and we're we're just very lucky to watch you perform. And I, and I've done that on a number of times. I've I've watched you on TV, but I've had the pleasure of standing on the pool deck and, and watching you perform. Not only in the racing pool, but the way that you kind of conduct yourself from the moment you walk into the pool, there's a lot to learn from you and a lot to, a lot to take in and um, a lot to be very thankful for in terms of the way you go about your business. You're very professional and, and I love it. Um, just in terms of right now, uh, you've got the world championships coming up here in about three weeks. Can you just let us know where you are in your preparation right now? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm very professional as it took me 30 minutes to hop on this call with you. Um, <laughs> so we, um, the lead up to trials was honestly a little bit, uh, I didn't know what I was going to get, if I'm just being completely honest. Mm -hmm. um, new training group this year, rel new coaches, but not really. I mean, mm -hmm. I've worked with Steven Nesty for, I mean, four years while I was in college. Right. Um, but so many new, new things. Mm -hmm. um, now, don't get me wrong, as soon as I stepped foot on deck, as soon as I stepped foot in the weight room, I was, I was all in with this group and I was, I was completely bought in. Mm -hmm. But still, it was just so much new stuff. So I really didn't know what I was going to get until Natalie Hines uh, was the heat before me for the 100 free, which was our first swim at trials. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw that she did great. And I was like, okay, we're, we're good to go. And I saw the signs leading up to trials. Everything was fine. So really what I told, what I told Nesty after, um, trials was we don't need to be a hero with anything let's just keep maintaining um keep bringing it down and then of course fine tuning i mean i'm always always fine tuning but yeah i don't think we needed to make too many drastic changes from trials um maybe some things here and there with the freestyle but we saw glimpses of of um you know geniusness not really but we saw glimpses of, of hope there um, so it was nice, nice to finally get like a, a grasp on something, especially with how strange the year has been and how quick the year came up on us. So, yeah, we're just maintaining right now, getting ready for camp and then fine tuning as we see fit. Yeah, man, a lot of people had comments on your freestyle, me, me being one of them. I, I kind of dissected it or I tried to a little bit in, in my own way. Um, there, there are people that dive deep into this stuff, man. I, I was not that person. I was just, I just turned it on, looked at it and kind of made some comments and made a couple of mistakes, as you know, I even sent it to you, but, uh, but there, a lot of people are commenting on it in, in terms of your freestyle. It seems like you are making some tweaks. Uh, are you going with yeah. a straight arm now? No, I, I don't even want to call it that. It's not, I, I personally don't like straight arm. I think there's only a select few people who can actually do it. And I think you have to have just an insanely strong kick, which is not me. So I, I don't think I'm fit for straight arm. Mm. And it's weird because when I'm in the water, it doesn't even feel like that's what I'm trying to do. And then I'll watch it back. I'm like, ah, that's, that's not what I'm feeling, which is fine. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but no, it, it, it does make me excited because I'm not, I've never been scared to want to try something new. I've, I've mixed up stuff with technique and strokes all the time. Uh, and Coach Steve's great about that. He's not scared to try something new. I probably try new things in practice every single day, or I'll, I'll reword a certain, a certain aspect of of a certain stroke. Just put the language together differently. I'm not I'm not afraid to do these things. So, 
we were kind of putting together a new a new freestyle, and I don't think that's how my freestyle is going to look come Budapest. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I've just I wanted to try some new things, see what see what fits. Um, but yeah, I think I need to definitely be a bit more relaxed on the recovery for sure for the freestyle. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't like how my, I like my 50 stroke a lot. I didn't like my hundred stroke at, at trials, but still, I mean, seven, 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 the, the time's fine. So it's nice to know that even with mixing things up that, you know, we can, we can still put up some, some halfway decent times and then move forward with it and take things we like from that stroke or throw away things we don't like from the stroke and then just move forward with it. But no, that stroke I did at trials, that's not what I want, want to keep at all. Yeah. It's a hard balance, man, in, in terms of making the U.S. team and leaving enough or leaving something extra for the World Championships where you take on the best in the world because making the U.S. team is extremely difficult. You're, you're already racing guys that are best in the world. So to not give that the um, the credit it deserves and the respect it deserves is, is difficult. But I understand, you know, you're you're in a position where you do have a little bit of a buffer. So when you're thinking about the trials – do you, do you hold back a little bit, almost like an SEC mentality where it's like you want to go, you want to win, but you want to save something for NCAAs? Is there a little bit of that? Uh, not on purpose, certainly not from a mental aspect. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, every every time I'm I'm jumping in for a swim, I'm, I'm trying to go as fast as I can go. I'm not purposely trying to hold back or, or anything. Like no, that. I don't mean I, that. I, I mean more in your preparation, I guess. Oh, oh, I, I see. I see. I see. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I think even since high school, it's just I've, I've worked well with a, a double taper. Um, right. I don't know. It's not really something I'm, I'm purposely trying to do. I just think, especially being at UF that long, we've always been, you know, the second swim meet has been the, the priority. Of course, yeah. we know we have to get the job done at trials and it's yeah. not easy mm-hmm. at all, especially with the U.S. team. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, we're not all, all the way in, but at the same time, we're still all in, you know, okay. we have to make yeah. the team. So that's why, you know, sure. I wasn't going best times at trials, but I was really happy with where the times were. The goal with that meet is to get your hand on the wall first or second, and then, then you move forward and then you can prioritize the world championships. But it was, I never, I never liked talking about olympics or worlds before olympic trials or world trials you have to make the team it's never a given Mm -hmm. that's one thing i didn't understand is you all you always saw lofty or or phelps at these meets every time they had to go through the the process of actually qualifying for the team that everyone just kind of dismisses which i'm not expecting everyone to keep up with it but for me i'm like oh this it doesn't it really doesn't get any easier Mm -hmm. um so yeah again that the goal at these meets is to get your hand on the wall first or second and then you move forward off of that and then you can start talking about world championships and then you can start talking about olympics so i like i like to do stepping stones along the way and prioritize what my goals are in a, in a timely manner um so yeah trials was, that it was a tough it was a tough meet definitely a different feel than olympic trials um i think i learned a lot from olympic trials last year moving into world trials um and then having having a team there and you know five other gators making it certainly certainly helped um but yeah it was it was a fun meet definitely want to make some changes moving forward but i wouldn't say we're we're dismissing that meet or trying to not go fast at that meet i think it's just i've always been set up well for the the double taper and listen i just want to get this straight right now too when you say um definitely want to make some changes moving forward and and you even talk about your freestyle there's probably people listening to this right now who might say dig into that brett and I'm going to, out of respect, I'm not going to do that. you got the world championships here in three weeks. And I'm not going to go there, man, because this is, is very personal stuff to you. And I think it's, you know, things that you and your coach are working on. We don't need to know everything, right? There's stuff that you need to keep. And, and out of respect, I just want people to know that I'm not digging into this right now. So um, there's that. I wouldn't, I, want... I wouldn't give any, I wouldn't give anything anyways. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Let's see. You're a smart man. Um, but in terms of uh, taper blues, like right now, you're probably at the beginning of your taper or just started. But w- what is that for you? Do you go through those experiences in taper where you have those days that just are feeling terrible? Can you relate to other swimmers like that? Yeah, um, I am. I'm certainly a taper blues kind of guy. And your brain likes to forget every year that you go through it. So it seems like a, some new some new event every single year. But 
if I flip through, actually my logbooks are all right there. If I flip through logbooks from any year, I'm going to see in there at some point where it just, the journaling just says feel terrible, mm -hmm. terrible times, terrible, terrible, terrible. And it, the timing fluctuates a little bit each year, how long it lasts fluctuates a little bit. Um, but yeah, I had it pretty bad before trials. Um, since I've been back from trials, I've actually been very consistent. So I've been really happy with that. But before trials, I definitely had the taper blues pretty bad. I'm trying to think of like when my worst practice was actually, oh yeah, I was, I think it was like a week out from trials. I was pretty terrible. I can't remember what the set was. Um, I think it was like a broken hundred or something, but it was bad. And I was like trying not to get nervous, but it's a new, it's, it's the same thing every year. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's scary. Like you don't want to be going trash times like a yeah. week out from when you're supposed to be swimming but then that's when you have to fall back on what you've done in training that year right. trusting in the coaches and i did i, I did i mean so i was i was all right to be honest i was a bit grumpy that practice mm -hmm. um but that's when i have to lean on my teammates you know that's why i still need a coach i, yeah. I can't do this sport by myself i don't sure. i don't know what i'm doing i don't really know what i'm doing at all to be honest <laughs> like i can't write my practices and stuff um, so yeah, like e even, even moments like that, I, I have to fall on a coach. Uh, but yeah, before trials was pretty bad, really bad actually. Yeah. I mean, I've been there, man. I know it. And I've had athletes that have been there, but you, you know, great athletes like you always wake up on race day and say, it, it, it doesn't matter how I feel today. Yep. Today's the day I race. I mean, they're not moving the event because Caleb Dressel doesn't feel good the day he wakes up. You know what I mean? So it, it's happening whether you like it or not. Right. Yeah, I think actually this would probably be great for maybe not even the young swimmers, but my best feeling event at trials. So just, just a couple of weeks ago, my best feeling warm up walking into the pool was hundred fly at night, which is what I consider to be one of my worst swims of that meet. Mm. And my worst, my worst feeling warm up, my, my dive 25, my pace, even getting in, doing my long swim was before the 53. And I consider that to be my my best swim so it really isn't the longer i'm in the sport you hear every coach say it, it's not about feel like forget the feel mm -hmm. and the longer i'm in the sport it really isn't it's not about feel at all one of my worst feeling meets as a whole was probably 2019 worlds and that wow. was i want a best best time in every event um oh, wow. so it's not about feel yeah. yeah sometimes you just have to get up get up and race that's all the sport is it's yeah. about it's just getting up and racing and there's nothing more to it than that you don't need to rely on feel and sometimes you just, honestly, sometimes you got to throw a technique out the window too and not be thinking so much, which mm -hmm. I think a lot in practice, but sometimes for racing, just go. So just shot up and swim. I think that's the easiest thing. Man, I'm glad you mentioned that because I couldn't agree more in terms of, of sprint and, and high level performance. It's just, you just have those days where you got to be like, well, even the warm up, like you said, I've had swimmers, very, very high level swimmers perform at, at, at world champs and Olympics and had miserable warm ups. And so I can, I can relate to that. It's just, the best athletes just say, you know what, it's 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 going to happen anyway, so let's go do it. So you kind of put it behind you. Um, in terms of your physical recovery, what are things you do right now, and and what do you do for mental recovery right now? My my biggest thing is sleep. Mm -hmm. If I if I had the worst practice of my life, you're not going to find me in the in the recovery room, you're going to find me in an ice tank. I'm going to go straight to my truck, drive home, eat dinner, and then I'm going to go to bed. I've, I've, my record, my all time record, <laughs> I wasn't even sick. Oh, this happened this year. I, I was in bed, like asleep for, I think it was like 16 or 17 hours. And I'll tell you what, I came in, I can't remember what day it was on, but I came in the next practice. Um, and I was, I was phenomenal. I, mm -hmm. I, that's all I need. And my body lets me know. Um, but that's, that's my go-to thing. If I'm, if I'm tired or even shaken up mentally, just drained, just let me sleep and then I'll be good to go. But that's, that's my go-to. Um, and then I do like the, the Katsu machine. I mm -hmm. like that thing a lot. Okay. Um, uh, MA actually showed me at, at camp, we were playing poker and he, I saw it hooked up and I saw him post all the time about it. I was like, Hey, can I take this for a spin? <laughs> and then he showed it to me and I, I loved it. So I, I liked it a little bit. Uh, a lot better than the Normatec. The Normatec is just so cumbersome. Mm. Um, so I, I'll do that. That's mainly closer to taper. I really don't do too much recovery in season. I, <laughs> I kind of, I like to hurt. So um, yeah, not too much in season, but at meets and stuff, 
Oh, well, I do massage and acupuncture as well. Those are my go-to every week. I'll right. do massage Wednesday, right. um, mm -hmm. so today after practice, and then um, acupuncture is, is tomorrow. So, yeah, between those four, that's pretty much all I do. We individualize training in the pool, so why not individualize your nutrition? Erica Biney of Biney Wellness Building will help you and your swimmers get exactly what each athlete needs through genetic testing and personalized nutrition plans. So stop guessing what you should and shouldn't be putting into your body. Athletes within a few weeks have noticed they're recovering faster because they're fueling their body with what they need and staying away from what their body hates. Erica understands swimming. She gets it. She's worked with over 20 Olympians, including the fastest man in the world, Caleb Dressel. Group discounts are available, so go to Biney Wellness Building and get in touch with Erica today. That's Biney, B-E-I-N-E, wellnessbuilding.net. Swim Angelfish. Swim Angelfish is an online certification program that strengthens your teaching curriculum to serve swimmers of all abilities. Swim Angelfish will prepare you and your instructors with the skills to teach swimmers with autism, physical disabilities, anxiety, sensory and motor conditions, and more. Learn to teach skills faster and with more comfort with Swim Angelfish. Apply for an only alpha pool product scholarship and receive up to 50% off your certification. Go to swimangelfish.com today to apply. Are you a massage guy after every race or like a flush or anything, or is there times where you just avoid the table? Um, so I've seen the, uh, oh, okay. I'm going to be careful how, how I word it. <laughs> um, I've seen people live on that massage table. Yes. yes. Um, I, yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I was going to say something else, what we, what we call them. Um, but yeah, <laughs> people who live on the massage table, I'm not necessarily one of those, especially especially leading up to a meet, like I don't want my body to be so loose that I lose all my feel of what I felt in season. So right. it's basically just getting rid of the like gunk and bad right. stuff. Right. Um, so Dita, my, my massage lady, like at swim meets, I'm not really going to get on the table except if it's just to flush out lactic acid. That's mm -hmm. it. I'm not trying to like loosen up anything like where I'm at at that point. That's where my body has been prepared to show up at the meet. So if it's a little bit tight in some spots, just, just leave it alone. Right, um, but right. you can flush out the gunk and whatnot. But yeah, I think some people can, can overdo it. And there's nothing that makes you swim fast. There's nothing at all. And I've, I've, there's been some nights where I'll be like, Hey, Dita, cause she was with me at uh, Olympic trials and world trials. I'll, I'll just tell her like, you know what? I just need to go to bed tonight. Like I'm, I promise yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I just need food, water, and then let me go to bed. So yeah, it's, it's a feel thing, but nothing's going to make you swim fast. You're not, if you get a massage, you're not guaranteed to swim fast. It's not going to magic that magically make you feel better. Right. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Um, where does, where does pressure and expectation come for you now? I mean, you're, you're signing, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of sponsor deals now, and as you should be as the best swimmer in the world. You're making money, you've got sponsors, you've got obligations, you've got media attention, you've got social media, uh, you know, so that's the, the usual stuff, but where, do, where does pressure and expectation come from you? Yeah, it's, it's something I've definitely had to grow, grow with, and, and it's ever since I turned pro, it's something I've had to figure out, it's the mm -hmm. best way to put it um and it was a disaster at 2018 when I first turned pro I mean everywhere I looked someone was trying to grab my attention signing a lawyer signing an agent signing with speedo mm -hmm. I, I was just a mess and it it showed in my performance that year I was just stressed and that's been the biggest biggest thing the biggest goal this year was to have balance right. of not just I, I love this sport I consider myself to be obsessed with it mm -hmm. which I think is fine but I have to have, I have to have balance. Mm -hmm. um, I think my, my best example I had for this year was, um, oh, at the um, swimming in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't swim 100 free the last day. So that was actually my one year anniversary with Megan, mm -hmm. which is crazy to think. Um, that only happens one time. And at first my reaction, like a couple of weeks out from the meet was no, sorry, we can't do anything. I, I swim that day. Right. And then I was thinking, and we talked it over. It said, you know, I, it would be really nice to be able to do something with you. So swam the first two days of the meet. That's why I time trialed in between sessions on the second day of the meet and then scratch Sunday. So me and Megan could go do something for our one year anniversary. I texted Nessie. I said, Hey, 
like I would really like to do something for me and Megan's one year. And he, mm-hmm. he, he was like, well, of course. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, we made it work. I time trialed the hunter free, moved forward with it and then had balance, like was able to do something. So that was like the most prime example I think I have for this year of just finding that balance and not yeah. just, no, I can't, no, I can't do it swimming. Um, and of course I'm not, I'm not missing practices or anything, but just having that yeah. refresher, uh, because I, I think I was in a little deep leading up to Tokyo. I think I was making myself a little miserable and I don't, mm-hmm. I don't want to get back to that. I want to stay in this sport as long as I can. I want to have that balance. I want to, I want to swim fast. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think the best way to swim fast is resorting to every decision geared towards swimming. I think yeah. if you have, have balance, I think that's what was Missy, Missy Franklin's quote um that is so basic but it's so good no one else said it before uh, uh, a happy swimmer is a fast swimmer yeah um and I, I i think it's i think it's very true i mean i i was training well in 2018 the only difference was i was stressed out of my mind i wasn't wasn't happy that's when slow as anything so that's been the goal this year is just to find that any little edge again this is still this is training <laughs> the, the goal for this year was balance i consider that to be training we're training towards something looking for ways to get better it's just in a different a different format it's not stroke technique it's just a mental a mental edge good for you man yeah i like that and as you were talking about balance it, it brought me to think of somebody that i've had an association with recently who is is similar to you in that sense but but also um really looks up to you so i kind of wanted to mention his name cody simpson just made the australian team for the 100 butterfly he looks at you as kind of the all-time great as someone that he studies and and I want you to know he, he, he does watch you a lot. Um, but in terms of balance, he has this music side to him. He has the swimming side. And he, yeah. never, he never fully cut out the music side in terms of like, you know, not picking up a guitar or anything. So there's always that. He comes back from a hard practice. He'll pick up a guitar. He'll do, you know, have this balance. But, you know, you've probably heard about the story. What, what do you think of Cody? I've never, I've never got to meet him, but I remember when it first, the news first broke. And I think, I think the first thing that was like, kind of, kind of put out there was, um, I think he went like a 51, 51 something hundred yard fly. Yeah. hundred, hundred yards. Like when yeah. he was first in, yeah. When he was first into training and now he just went a 51 hundred <laughs> meter fly. Yeah. Uh, and, and a relatively short amount of time, I think by swimming standards, like yeah. it, it takes a while to get to really get the the gears turning in the sport. So I was, I still am, I was, and still am very impressed with his progress and how he threw it out there um, of, Hey, this is something I want to do. So t- for one thing to actually go fast mm-hmm. and to actually perform, but to put it out there and do it, it was take some balls. And he, he's just been stepping up and I, I've been very impressed with it, but I've never gotten to meet him. I really don't know much about him. Um, I know he can sing a lot better than me, um, but other than that, play drums been, better than him. I know that. <laughs> that's true. Well, I don't even know who knows. He can probably <laughs> give me at that as well. Um, but no, I, I haven't gotten to meet him, but it's been a very, very fascinating watching how he's actually doing the thing he wants, wants to do one. And then, um, just performing under all that pressure after putting it out there. I think it's, I think it's really cool. Yeah, well, like I said, he's a big fan of your, yours. He studies you. How cool would it be at like a world championships after party if we have have Cody, um, you know, on lead guitar singing and Caleb on drums? Man, what an after party that would be! <laughs> Just thought of that. Um, you, you talked about Megan. T- tell me about who's your who's your inner circle. Obviously, your wife and your family is very close to you. Your whole family, I know that um who's who's the inner circle for you the people that are just on the inside with you yeah you know there's not there's really not too many I think I think if there's one thing that's kind of changed about me since taking off or being more in the spotlight however you want to word it it's definitely become more of a a hermit crab a little bit Mm -hmm. um no new friends to a certain extent uh but yeah certainly certainly my entire family um my agent Erica Mm-hmm. the my acupuncturist and massage therapist that bodies and balance carlos and dita i mean of course megan my best mm-hmm. friends ben bailey yawn um my coaches are in there like it, it, it is a relatively small group right um but I, it's helped so much keeping it small and they don't nobody in that circle asks for anything from me which i think is what's huge um, especially after coming back from Tokyo or leading up to meets like this, like, it's just a very easy, mm-hmm. 
I don't have to cater to them. They don't have to cater to me. Um, I could go a couple, couple weeks without talking to Ben on the phone. Um, that Ben was my best man at my wedding. But when we do pick up the phone, everything's good to go. Like just right. the easy go. That's what, I mean, that's what a best friend is. That's what that inner circle is. You don't need to pamper them. They're not high, high maintenance is the word right, I was looking right. for. No one in my inner circle is high maintenance. And that's just what I crave because there's a lot of other elements of my career path that are extremely high maintenance. Um, so yeah, I've been very, very thankful for the group that I do have of maybe 10, 10 people in the, in the yeah. inner circle, something like that. Um, yeah. but yeah, it gets, it gets tough. It gets really tough. I've definitely become more and more of a, of a hermit crab, um, inside my shell, I guess you can say a lot more since, since taken off. Cause I don't, I don't really like the spotlight. Um, I don't like the attention again, how I started this, this interview was I just want to swim fast, man. I don't really, I don't really care about all the other, all the other baggage. It's just fun swimming fast. Yeah, absolutely. There is a competitive side to you. And, and this is where it kind of gets mixed up between Caleb, the good guy and Caleb, the competitor, because you, you, you genuinely are a good guy, right? But there's also that person that hates to lose. And so some people would think, well, that, that, that takes a certain type of mentality to want to kind of beat other people in a sense. Like you can't just be a good guy, right? Like there's, there's some competitive nature in there. So what is it? Where does that come from for you? Uh, I mean, it's, it's in practice. Uh, uh, my favorite part about the favorite part about this sport by far is practice. I just love, I love training. I love racing and training. Um, it's, it, it's not an accident. There's nothing in this sport that is an accident. What you're, what you're doing in practice is are the results you're going to get. Right. Um, and that's why being, being part of a team is so, is so huge for me. Um, I'm not, I'm not there to have a good time. I'm there to get better. I'm there to race you. And I think that's just the easiest way to get better. You replicate what you're going to do in a race and you do it in practice. I've never, never had a race hurt worse than practice. Um, I don't think I've ever had a race more mentally fatiguing than a practice um, in regards to actual when you're in the water performing. Um, but yeah, the results you want to get, you have to replicate that in practice. That's why I like it. You have, you have a set window of here's your time to get better. And then of course, out of the water, your extracurricular activities, what you're doing are going to affect that as well. But just racing your teammates in practice, I think that's where it comes from. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not there to, to enjoy my time. I'm, I'm there to get better. Now, most of the time I do enjoy my time. Like I said, I love going to practice, but no, I'm not, I'm not your friend when they're there. That's not the priority. The priority is make you better and to, to help myself get better. Um, like but yeah, no, I, I feel like I'm a, I'm a fun to have around in practice. I'm, I am in a good mood because I do enjoy it, but that's, that's never the priority. That's just the byproduct. How does that then translate to competition then? You know, you don't like to lose in practice. So I imagine you don't like to lose at competition. If, if there's a time where you do, I mean, what is it for you? Is it, is it, if I do my best and I feel like I gave everything I had, if I get beat, I'm okay with it. But if I don't do my best on that particular day and I get beat, i got a problem with it. Is that kind of the theory? Yeah. Yeah. That's a hundred percent what it is. I think I, I don't know. I don't know if you've asked this question, but I think if I were to hit a goal time, if I were to hit one of my goal times at the Olympics, swam just like as close to a perfect race as I, as I could get, right. but I touched second. Yeah man, I, I, I think I'd be okay with it. My, that's not my goal in this sport is it's, it's about self-improvement. It's not about just beating people. Right. Like, I, I don't know. And I, I've gone back and forth on this argument. I've had this argument many times in the weight room and actually with uh, Grant, who's on the track team at UF, like, would you rather hit a goal time, mm -hmm. have one of those close to the perfect races and get second? Or would you rather go like a 50 point hundred free and, and touch first? And exactly. I'm, yeah. I always, my first immediate reaction is I'd rather hit the goal time. Uh, but then Grant, his, the best argument I've heard back was it doesn't matter. The Olympics is about who's performing on that day. Mm -hmm. Who's the best on that day. So I don't know. I've gone back and forth with it. But for me, it's just about self-improvement. Of course, I love racing. That's been some of my, some of my best times have been in some of the, um, some of the closest races I've had because racing – you go, you resort to instinct. You can't think about anything else besides beating the guy next to you. That's why it's, it's so fun going with my lack. It's so fun going with Chalmers in these events, even Bruno, even Flo in the 50, like you don't have time to think about what you're going to do for your race plan. The race plan is beating the guy next to you. 
So I know I'm, I'm kind of contradicting myself here. I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I like swimming fast. I like racing. As soon as you enter the water, it's a whole new world. It's a whole new, I mean, you know, it's a whole new element. There's new sounds around you, the water, water rushing by you, the feel of the water. You're going speeds that only you can really explain, you know, even, I, you know, the coolest part about the 50 free short course was, okay, the, the time, whatever. For me, I got to experience a speed in the water that no one else has experienced before. And yeah, that's and that, not, that. not, not, a, <laughs> yeah, not, a, not a in your, yeah, not a in your face, like bunch of everyone else, a bunch of losers, not that at all. But for me personally, realizing that, man, I got to experience, and I would love for other people to experience that. I would, I would love for people to, I don't know, 16 would be, I would love to see a 16 in my life, a 17 low, whatever it may be, but for someone else to experience that type of speed and, and Cielo, he got to experience that long course. Uh, maybe um, Bousquet was <laughs> very close to feeling that speed, but he has, he has an experience in the water and a feeling that only he has experienced. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Actually, just for the sake of uh, history here, Bousquet felt it first. He broke the world record first. First man under 21, 20.94. 20 and, oh. and then Cielo got so upset about the fact that, um, that that Fred had done it first. He was like, I'm going to go get it next. So he, that was his life mission just to take it off Fred. But, Wait, um, <laughs> did, did Bousquet win in 2009? The 50 so, at world? No, he got second. So Bousquet broke it at the French trials. He went 20.9. I was actually standing on the pool deck with him. And he had one of those moments too, by the way, in warm up where I had to walk away because he was complaining about how terrible he felt. Like, I suck. I feel terrible. This sucks. Blah, blah, blah. And so I walked away. And then 10 minutes later, he goes out and breaks the world record and first man under 21 seconds. I'm like, you son of a gun. I was so pissed at him that day. But uh, Vasa has been the go-to training tool outside of the pool for over 30 years. Vasa's products are ideal for developing power and proper technique in your swimmer's catch. Add a few Vasa trainers to your pool deck and it's like adding an extra lane to your swimming pool. Go to vasatrainer.com, use code BREAD at checkout and get 10% off anything from Vasa. Destro Swim Towers. Gain strength in the water with a tower of power. Save $150 per double swim tower by using code BRETT, B-R-E-T-T, -T, at checkout. Destromachines.com. And let's talk about this real quick. So at that time, there was a lot of criticism about my athletes swimming fast in suits. And, and a lot of people were saying, you know, humans shouldn't be going that fast. Humans will never be able to go that fast. And my um, argument at that time, this was in 2009, was humans will absolutely go that fast. And yes, we can do it. And I was like, I was like hell bent on proving, because I'd seen the way that Fred had trained and Caesar had trained. I'd seen it in practice. They're not wearing suits when, when they're going fast. So my, my big thing has always been like, let's get these damn world records now. And, <laughs> and, and you're the closest man. So like, you know, I'm going to ask you and I know what the answer is, but is, are these world records a reality for some human to go that fast without the suits? Are you talking about the one, the one still standing right now? Like I'm talking the, about the 50 the free and the 100 one. free. I mean, you're right there, man. And, and everybody's like, oh, these will never be broken. And here we are with Caleb Dressel hundreds of seconds away. These things are going to get broken, I, aren't they? I mean, I, I'll i be dead by then, but every record in this sport, I mean, I, I'm going to sound like a weirdo, but the, we don't know the limits of what a human can go. Maybe it's 0 .001. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll be the 100 free. I don't know. Either the, the earth will be burned up by then. I'll be long <laughs> gone, but you don't know what the limit is. Every time someone, I don't know even why people open their mouths anymore. Did we think there'd be a guy going 56 and a hundred breaststroke? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. no one would have thought that a couple of years ago. Like, right. of course not. Um, that's the fun part is the, is the chase for them. But yeah, I mean, every, every suit record, I think some will take longer to fall than mm -hmm. others. Like I think the women's two fly is going to take a good amount of time. I think the men's two free is going to take a, mm -hmm. a good amount of time. The men's right. men's four free. Um, but there's some, I think that are more, I, it, it's, I don't even like wording it like that. I don't like saying more impressive. Like these are the fastest times anyone has gone. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, 
you had Cam McAvoy was 47 0. He was a 10th off. You had uh, Magnuson, who was, mm-hmm. I think, a 10th off. Do, is, does McAvoy have the, the Aussie record? Yeah, I think 7 0. 47 0. 4702, I think. Yep, yep. And then and then Kyle's, yeah, Kyle was right behind him. And then Magnuson was right behind him. Like there's guys who are a tenth off. Um you're the only guy right I believe there, who's gone under 47, right? With the with the, just the jammer. The jammer. I think I I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. You. I think you're right. What's your best? 46 um, yeah, nine. I, mean, I think it's nine six. 46 nine six. Nine, six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this thing. Yeah, I mean, so you're you're hundreds right away there. from the the hundred. You're, you're hundreds away from the fifty, and hundreds away from the hundred. Where do you feel closest? Do you feel closer to the fifty or the hundred? The hundred. There's more. There's more time to. There's more time to work with. Right. Right. Yeah. There's there's more time to work. I mean that that the fifty world record is gnarly. It's <laughs> like, was there was it only Cielo and. Fusque under they're the only 21. two that have been under 21 yeah yeah wow yeah i mean it's it's a it's a fast time i mean i'm a a tenth and a 50 is a long mm-hmm. it's a long way to go mm-hmm. um so yeah what was it a, cu- a couple hundreds for the the hundred free and like i said i'm not i'm not gonna say i'm I, hey i'm gonna i'm breaking the world record like i'm not gonna do that that's never been sure. my style yeah. Yeah. all yeah. i'm gonna say like of course i know what the time is um, of course, I want to make changes in my swimming. That's why I'm messing with different stroke technique and trying mm-hmm. different things. Mm-hmm. I just want to go fast. My goal in the sport is not to beat anyone or or try to make someone's life miserable just because mm-hmm. I want to be better than them. That's not that's not what I want to do. I just enjoy the sport. I enjoy the feel of the water, that relationship with the water, and I want to move forward with that. I mean, that being said, of course, it would be great to have to have the 50, 50 hundred world record, but. There's other things I want to do in the sport besides chase the time. Um, I would like to get my 100 free stroke technique down a little better before we do that. Like there's yeah. other things around around the horizon. Even, I mean, practice tonight. I want to have a great practice tonight. That's the immediate goal. I'm not I'm not going to be coming in just obsessing over, you know, talking about world records if you're not taking a little, right. little steps along the way. So, right. yeah, I think some world records are more impressive than others. Um, I, I would say on the men's side, probably the, probably the two free is the most – most impressive because the only person mm-hmm. in jammer closest to that was was yannick 143.2 with the mm-hmm. london olympics mm-hmm. and then yeah. i think what what is what is duncan what's duncan's fastest since then i think 44 low i don't, I don't, I don't even think he's been 43 has he 40 low. i don't think anyone's been under 44 since no, since okay. yannick did that yeah that's, that's why it was weird it's 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 almost like plateaued in a way mm-hmm. ever since uh I, I, I like feel bad because I don't even I don't even really swim the two free, so I'm like <laughs> talk talking about a plateauing. Yeah, you've all plateaued. Yeah, Come on, it. pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just it's interesting to see even with the super suit how far some people have have been off from that two free. So I don't know if if um if MP was that impressive or um, Biederman was just that impressive or if the suit for something for the two free just helped out that much. I don't know. Yeah, that that's that's a bit of a head scratcher that world record for sure. But I, I mean, Phelps Phelps were in um, you know forty threes without it is, is pretty impressive. But um, um, let me let me ask you this then. Let's move on to your start because your start is the most dominant thing in swimming. I mean, it it, it is one of those things where everybody knows that Caleb is going to put half a body length on them at the at the first fifteen, and it's just the way it goes. You got to deal with it, and. Um, and I, and I tell you, it's uh, for a lot of people that I would imagine, because I'm a 50 freestyle, you put half a body length on me every time we step up on the blocks. I, I, eventually, I'm going to be really bothered by it, you know? So um, <laughs> it's it's really dominant. So what what do you think you're doing well in the start? That And is it, is I don't want to say natural, but you're doing something better than everybody else. Is this something that you've trained to do better than everybody else? Or does it just come more natural to you to do it that way? Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk myself up. I, I think it's just it just comes natural. Uh, of course, it's something we work on. We know it's a strength, and we're not just gonna dismiss it. We're gonna try to capitalize on it right. the most we possibly can. But the fastest part of the sport is everything that's not to do with the water at all. It's the start, and then and then pushing off the walls. So of course, mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to take advantage of of a natural ability that's already there. Good gene. 
distance from mom and dad and try to make the most of it for the the swim. I mean, but even even for the hunter free, I mean, when I dive in, I'm I'm trying my best to carry that momentum from the start all the way to the 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 wall at the at the right. fifty. Yeah. Um, I'm not I'm not I'm not very good at creating speed. I'm I can maintain it though. I think that's one of my strengths. So I have to I have to capitalize on the start and the and the turns. Yeah. Um, okay, good. I appreciate it. Uh, a lot of people have kind of, um, people that they admire or idols or or people that they look up to in, in the sprinting world, you're going to be one of them for a lot of kids. Now, you know, kids are going to look up to you. They're going to put a Caleb Dressel poster on the wall and they'll be like, I want to be like Caleb Dressel. Was there anyone (laughs) like that for you growing up? Uh, did you have kind of a hero or an idol in sprinting at all? So for not for like, not for role model necessarily, it's yeah. for role model. It's always been, it's always been my mom and my dad. Yeah. Uh, and, and then honestly, my, my siblings, uh, anyone in my inner circle, if I'm being completely honest, but for technique, Anthony Irvin was my, mm-hmm. my guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought he had just the most beautiful strokes and i swear i stand by this Mm -hmm. if he trained for the two free i think he could have had one of the most beautiful beautiful strokes for a 200 free because it's 50 stroke it's everything is just driving so forward but it's with a high like a high elbow in a way he doesn't Mm -hmm. tony doesn't straight arm i think it's one of the most beautiful strokes and it got i mean it got him two gold medals so clearly Mm -hmm. it was it was working but yeah, Tony was the first guy I think I really started to obsess over stroke technique with. Um, that was the first one that that drew me into, yeah. okay, this is a, like once I got to the age of like understanding technique and really starting to pick it apart. But yeah, I'd say Tony, uh, I'm of course, underwater watching Michael and Lofty. Um, and then for, I don't know if I really had anyone for butterfly fly it was usually just tony for freestyle and then i would steal ideas from him and steal ideas underwater from michael and ryan um there's nothing wrong with stealing i think it's the mm. best thing ever you you steal it and make it your own you don't you don't use technique you steal it you make it your own and figure out what works for you it's funny that you say that because t- tony was one of my competitors but also one of one of the guys that i studied but um but also one of the guys where where i realized the more i looked at him and the more i studied him the more i realized i just couldn't do what he did i mean he's so damn good <laughs> i mean it's just the way that he the way that he put his hand in the water it's so hard to 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 explain this to people that don't understand swimming very well but there are certain people that can put their hand in the water and it's it, it belongs like the water says thank you and it holds on you know and um, you're definitely one of those yeah. guys too, but he was so frustrating because he was just so good. And like you said, so technically perfect. I'd look at it and be like, wow. I mean, how does he do that? I couldn't even do the action that he did yeah. with his yeah. arms. And I would, I'd always try and place it the way he placed it. And I just couldn't, I was like, yeah. it's not going to happen, you know? So yeah. Any, any still photo taken of him racing, it's just, it's all the same. Yeah. It's all just it's all just beautiful. It's art. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Arm just yep. right here. Yep. Every mm-hmm. time it's so consistent. Right and yeah, it's probably the most frustrating part was he's, he was not like he was big. It's not like he was yep. built. He's just kind of a string bean that was just raw and he, oh, people couldn't beat him. Yeah. Ah, I freaking love Tony. Frustrating. Great man. guy. Yeah. Also. The funny that you say uh, any, any point where you stop, because this is a- Eamon Sullivan when he broke the world record for the first time in the 50 freestyle. And I've watched this video multiple times. And this is one of the, the, the best photos of all time where it's just a freeze frame. Is that a still on, on, from that race? That's a still from that race where, where he, he's just in a perfect oh, wow. alignment. And I, I click, I click wow. on this wow. race multiple times and stop it. Wherever it stops, he's in perfect position. So this is, so Eamon was very much like a, like a um, Anthony Irvin too. And, and I love that photo. So um, what else have I got here? I got, what was got, his world? What's what, what was his world record? What, I think at the go? time, I think at the time he went 21, four, I think that that's okay. I think that's what he did in the 2008 Olympic trials. I think it was, I think he took it to 21.4, and at that time there was a good jump. I think the I think the world record was still uh, I think it was like 21.8. So he took like 0.4 off it at the time. So it was a pretty big jump. But I watched Whoa. that swim. Yeah, check it out on on YouTube, man. It's a, it's an incredible swim. Okay. It's just it's just beautiful. Like his technique is gorgeous, and he was a string bean too, man. No muscle, just lean. Um, beautiful swimmer uh Eamon Sullivan too 
Um, if that's your go, if that's your favorite go to fifty to watch, I still think the the most beautiful hundred free I've ever seen was McAvoy. McAvoy. Yeah. McAvoy's. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think because it's uh, same thing. He wasn't he mm-hmm. wasn't very big stream mm-hmm. beam, but forty seven oh forty seven oh two, and it just looked beautiful. Mm-hmm. That was at a tr- trials before trials. sixteen, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. that's the problem in Australia a lot because they're coming off their summer, and the reason why they swim. Uh, my theory was why I always swim fast at the trials because you're coming off your summer, you've got tons of racing in the summer. You know what it's like in America; you got tons of racing. So the Australians are coming off their summer. And they hit this March, April trials. And it's about, it used to be about four months out from the Olympics or worlds or whatever. And you're coming off amazing racing. You got a tan, you feel good about yourself. Everything's working, (laughs) clicking. And then it's like, yeah, I want to be at my best. So you do a full shave because you know, you got four months and then, and then you go into winter and there's no racing and it's miserable and it's cold. So I always felt like the Aussies were at a massive disadvantage to the Americans because they'd wait four (laughs) months to kind of refocus and recharge again. And, and they're going through this miserable winter. So um, they, they've made the intelligent decision now to, to pull their trials up about a month before, like, like the Americans. So I think it's helping them a little bit um, in that sense. Uh, it, is, it is crazy to see the Australian women. that they've, they've got some sprinters going, right? Goodness. They, I thought they were the most dominant by far in Tokyo. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were, they were very impressive. Um, it's weird because I've like gotten to race some of them with the, the mixed medleys. Mm. It was so, it was, um, oh, who was it after, um, who's the butterfly? Um, Emma, 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 Emma swam McKean? fly on the, yes. Emma, um, after 2017, that was like my first time doing a mixed medley relay. And like, usually with the guys, like you just you give like a, like a, a butt slap or something or like yeah. daff them up, whatever. <laughs> But I was like, what do you, what do you do with a girl? So I think I like, I think I like dapped her up or something or, but I was like, oh wait, I, this is not, this is not what you're supposed to do. I can't remember. I think I like maybe, maybe went in for like the daff up and then I just ended up giving a hug. But I was like, oh, I've never, I've never been in this situation. I don't know what to do. We're going to come up with some etiquette for those mixed meal, medley realize uh, team. team yeah. Events. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I just saw a, uh, an image of your arm, actually, and I got a, just a just an interesting question. How do you how do you select your tattoos, man? Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to sound so dumb, but basically just things I things I like. Um, I mean, that's basically how I did things I like and things that I want to be on my body. I'm not just going to put anything that I like on my body, but I just try to make the process as fun as it it could be, and then I don't know, have it be a representative of of who I am, what I like, um, you know, we're in a sport where you don't, you don't get to wear any clothes, so you can't really be too expressive. Yeah. Um, so I feel like for me, that's, that's, that's what the tattoos do. Um, I, I like, I like big ones, as you can see. I mean, like, honestly, I, I only consider I have two tattoos, one on my arm, one on my leg. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's just a fun way to express myself. Uh, my brother has, a full arm and leg sleeve as well. And honestly, if my brother didn't get them, I don't know if I'd have any. I'm not sure. Um, he's always kind of been the, the front runner for our family. Everyone looks up to Tyler. Everyone considers him a leader. So I'd probably just playing copycat a little bit, being little brother. Do you have a favorite at all? Uh, no, I, I, I don't think I do. I mean, the leg is still going on. I was planning on finishing that after, after Worlds, but I, I don't know. Even if I did, I don't think I could say it out loud because then it would mess with me. Like, oh, this is my favorite one out of everything that's permanently on my body. So I'm not. Even if I did, I probably couldn't admit it. Oh, good. All right. That that's that's the easy one. Um, a lot of talk about Katie Ledecky coming to train at Florida and, and the success she's having now. What what have you learned from her? Maybe is is there anything you've learned from her? Like watching her practice, watching her train, being around her. Have you learned something? Yeah, um, I, I picked up on it very quick. She is so good. I, I think there's a lot of differences between me and Katie, but also regarding the sport of swimming, I think there's a lot of similarities how we approach it. We just we just want to shut up and swim. Uh, it's, it's as simple as that. But she does such a good job of if she doesn't want to do something, she's so good at saying no. Mm. Uh, like maybe, maybe potential sponsors or even ISL is a good example. You know, it didn't really fit her schedule. And so for her... No, I don't want to do it. And that's the first thing I picked up on of, oh, she, she really knows how to prioritize herself first, have that balance and mm-hmm. be able to just say, nope, 
doesn't doesn't really fit my program. I'm not I'm not going to do that. And that's something I've learned from her, and it's been really good for me. And it's not like we talk about this stuff all the yeah. time or anything like that. But she's she's just really good at I think finding that that balance of what I was talking about this year. Um, and she's just really fun to have in in practice. I think she's in, enjoying it. Um, I think she's very much enjoying it. Actually, yesterday's practice was really funny. It was um, we were just getting just enough time on the like wall to rest to where like the whole guys team was like basically making up scenarios like who would who would win in a 300 im with no freestyle <laughs> bobby or kieran mm. we 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 all picked kieran um i got brought into one oh oh 100 150 150 meter kieran or me um uh, 100 backstroke me or bobby and then and then i was like i think i think i could hang on for 310 meters against against katie no more i was like but i'd be fighting i'd be fighting for my life um so the group we have the chemistry especially with the world team it's just it's i've, I've never been anything a part of anything like it it's just you don't have to try it all everyone's just there to get better everyone's on the same page but then you can also have a good time and talk about i think i could beat katie in 310 meters and now the more i think about it the more i don't think i could <laughs> um but yeah just conversations like that katie fits right in she knows how to work um but yeah she just i think she just wants to shut up and swim and i'm, I'm very much the same way does she beat up on the guys how do, how do they like that when they beat up when she beats up on them yeah um i mean it's got it's 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 very hard not to lose the katie in practice from what i've i've seen i haven't yeah. run too many practices with her um but yeah it's like it's kind of a normal thing like i mean we get guys get beat by katie all the time in practice i mean yeah, she's I really good at really good at swimming um but she's part of the team it's not like it's this big like oh you got beat by a girl no she's she's part of the group and she's there to train she's there to help you get better so it, at first maybe the first couple couple weeks when it was a new thing it was like you'd hear it in the locker room but now you just hear it as she's one person on this team like oh here's what katie went today it was like i don't know it was better than me it's not this big like big deal anymore in a way um of like you got beat by a girl no she's there to get better she's there to help you get better and i think the guys on the team are helping her get better for sure yeah um listen man i just uh i just started a new, a new job i'm working full-time at any question at now and I'm, I'm super excited about it and i know that you're on the platform obviously and, and using it and uh, and honestly part of my excitement and, and will to want to interview you is because the stuff that I've seen on the platform and the way that you answer questions is just so captivating to me. I'm like, man, I thought I knew Caleb, but now I'm like, wow, <laughs> this guy's incredible. Like you really are captivating in terms of the way your authenticity of the way that you answer questions. I truly love it, man. And, and I recommend everybody just gets on the platform, even though I work for him now. But even before that, I was like, you need to get on there and listen to Caleb Dress. Like, you will learn so much. I mean, it's just incredible, um, your willingness and your openness to kind of really share. What? Why do you like that platform so much in terms of your, your ability to do that? Yeah, it's been, honestly, it's been, it's been great. It was, it was tough going on Instagram and have to, like, do, because you can do the, like, ask me a question thing on right. Instagram. But then, like, you do that and it's just, thousands like I just it's overwhelming so I, I don't I didn't really do that and then anytime I'd go live on Instagram it's just kind of the same same questions you'll yeah. get you know same thing but what I like about any questions is it's actually like real questions and yeah. it, it just seems a little more personal but I, I try my best to answer any any anytime I do an interview any anytime I do anything I try my best to keep it authentic mm -hmm. um and to keep it as real as I can um I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't really know how to do anything else besides that. I don't want to fake my way through anything or get caught up and just trying to blab about like something I don't know what I'm talking about. So any question, it's nice because I get to pick whatever question I want, whatever captivates mm -hmm. me yep. and just answer it. It's, yep. as, it's as simple as that. Um, but no, I, I do like it. I haven't been on in a bit. I was thinking about going on the other day. Um, but yeah, I, I do like it. It's just, it seems like a much more personal experience than what, the like Instagram questions or Instagram live has to offer. And especially being able to see the other person's face, like it just makes it a lot more, a lot more human, a lot more one-on-one, -on -one, even though it's technically not. Uh, but oh, the idea of it is, is, is really cool. I think.
Well, I love it, man. And look, everyone behind the scenes loves you on there in ter in terms of just like like I said, your your authenticity. It just come it screams at you like he's just so real, he's so honest. It's, and and I love it, man. And so I highly recommend people get on there because you've answered already over a hundred questions. So there's there's a ton to learn on there. But um, last question i don't even like this question really but like obviously paris is a couple of years away but but la is is a home olympics you know beyond that are you thinking la right now look that's why that's why the goal has been balance i i want to stay in the sport as long as i can maybe i reach the point one day to where i'm just swimming the 50 but then also when i say that out loud i know that i'm not gonna be able to let myself I'll do that if I can if I can swim any event I'm going to want to be able to do it of course I'm not going to want to like train down but yeah as long as my body holds up I've taken care of it the best I can I mean MP lofty they all swam into their 30s so what will I be I'll be 20 oh we're only two years out goodness gracious <laughs> so I'll be 27 I'll be 31 oh dude That's 31 yeah you're still a puppy I I Nick Santos is like 43 <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. So yeah, of course, I would, I would love to have a swim meet on US soil. I mean, I've yeah. never, I've never had a main or a major championships on US soil. They're all in Europe or Asia. So of course, I would like to hang on for that. Um, that would be that would be a dream. That would be an absolute dream. So yeah, as of right now, we'll aim for that. But yeah, you're right. We got to get through we got to get through Paris first. We got to get the world championships this year. And then we can start really yeah, talking about yeah. that stuff. well listen man good luck with that because i know you you put a lot of work into this and and you you want it to all come together and and uh you got a lot of fans out there a lot of people rooting for you and um i just love that you're you're taking the sport to, to new levels every time you step up on the blocks man it's it's good for the sport you know and you're a great ambassador and and i'm truly thankful for this man i really am but i've had sleepless nights wanting to talk to you you know so it's like a, this is a real a real honor for me i'm not even saying that it's just uh, I, I feel very blessed today so you made my day you made my week thank you good luck with everything man and i uh, appreciate you doing this okay yeah of course of course i very much in, enjoyed it um yeah it, it was those were good questions there's a lot to learn from the water i'm still learning a whole lot from the water so yeah i like this sport i'm gonna try to do it as long as i can and then maybe down the road you can get me back on here listen man i've got a lot more questions don't worry about that um i'd love i'd love to get super <laughs> technical with you but like i said out of respect i'm not doing that today so um good luck with everything and and you know maybe later we'll come back and we'll do something together okay appreciate it got it all right brad thank you very much man see you caleb bye